Pray for the Day by Richard M. Kildgard. Fade in. Close up on a TV screen and NBC Evening News broadcast. Superimpose on screen 2009. This is the NBC Evening News reporting tonight, Dan Curtis. Tonight we begin with the lingering effects of the real estate crash that hit home with millions of Americans last year. The foreclosure rate is on the rise with more and more Americans owing more on their homes than they're worth. Tonight we focus on one of the hardest hit areas, Miami, Florida, where not only have the home prices been affected, but local businesses are now being affected too. Reporting from Miami, Jessica Chandler. Series of shots, Miami real estate, new condos, home developments, golf courses, beaches. This was life in Miami a few years ago when real estate was the way to go. Low interest rates, stated income, and equity lines led to the upswing in home ownership. And now, foreclosure signs, deserted and ransacked homes, neglected yards, peeling paint. This was the result as the market crashed and homeowners went underwater. Simply put, they owed more than their homes were worth, forcing many out. Now the homes are vacant and businesses have no customers. People carrying boxes, kids crying, police serving eviction notices, for lease signs on businesses. The voice and TV screen fade out. Superimpose on screen, present day. Exterior street, day. An old abandoned neighborhood, eerily quiet. Overgrown yards, broken windows. A gentle breeze blows tattered curtains around the windows. A hose trickles rusty water. Weeds pop out of cracks in the streets. Suddenly, bang! A shot rings out off screen. We hear commotion nearby. A man, 30s, bloodied, bruised, dripping sweat and torn clothing, comes running out of a thicket of brush and drops prone on the ground, trying to catch his breath. Looks up and sees a house in front of him, gets to his feet and runs up to the door, knocks with all his might, nothing. Runs over to a neighboring house, again, nothing. Off to one side, he hears the slow rumbling of a truck engine. Down the street, he sees an old beat-up pickup slowly driving the street. The sun reflects off the windshield. With his last ounce of strength, he throws himself against the door and it flies open, sending him sprawling to the floor. Interior house, day. An unkempt house, old furniture, stuff scattered all over the place. He slams the door shut and runs from room to room, nobody. Goes to the kitchen and hurriedly goes through the drawers. Finds a screwdriver. Here's the truck outside. The engine stops, hears the doors creak open, runs into a bedroom, hides in a closet. Interior closet. He crouches down, trying to catch his breath. He hears the front door slowly opening and several sets of footsteps entering and moving about the house. Saw y'all run in here. Better come out. More we wait, the worse gonna get. Shaking, he holds the screwdriver at the ready. Hears the sound of a shotgun being cocked closes his eyes tight. Bring it here. Several people are heard entering the bedroom, then no sound. The closet door cracks open and a rattlesnake enters. He grits his teeth, trying not to scream, and shakes even harder as the snake is on him, rattle going full speed. Laughter is heard outside the closet. The closet door is pulled open, revealing several male figures, dirty, greasy, and dripping with sweat. One of them points the shotgun at him. Wakey, wakey, hands off snakey. He fires a shotgun into the closet over the victim's head. This spooks the snake, who leaps and bites his neck. He screams in agony, trembling as the life drains out of him. The laughter in the room and a few cheers grow louder and louder. Exterior Miami International Airport, day. A passenger plane touches down. Interior Airport Terminal, day. Making their way off the plane are John Pearson and his wife, Kathy, both mid-thirties, both a little overdressed for the heat and humidity of Miami. Well. Your rear? Where's the car rental counter? You don't need one. Miguel said he'd send a driver for us, remember? Are you okay? Oh, I'm okay. I just took too many Dramamine. I forgot you shouldn't drink coffee with it. I appreciate you flying even though you don't like it. It's okay. You work hard enough and I didn't want you driving out here. Well, hopefully my hard working days will all be over soon. Up ahead is a driver holding a sign. Pearson. There's our ride. The approach. John Pearson? Yes, uh, this is my wife, Kathy. Welcome to Miami. Car is right outside. Interior car, day. John and Kathy get in. Kathy closes her eyes and rubs her neck. You're sure you're not too tired? Oh, I should be fine. Everything okay, sir? 
Yeah, if you could just take us straight to our hotel, I'll, I'll call Miguel and cancel until tomorrow. Honey. You need to rest. He'll understand. To our hotel will be fine. Whatever you say, sir. Interior hotel room, day. Kathy lays on the bed, eyes closed, a wet towel on her forehead. John is on his phone. Yeah, I apologize for the delay, so you're good for tomorrow? That's very nice, but we can easily rent a car. No, no, I agree. We don't know the area, and we're within walking distance of a lot of stuff, so I suppose that would be... Yes. Thank you, Miguel. See you tomorrow at 9. Did he understand? Yeah, perfectly. Better? Yeah, a lot. Never got used to flying. If you're still not comfortable with it going home, we'll rent a car. You know, maybe take a side trip. If I cancel, it won't cost me my airline miles. That's sweet, but we'll see. So we're meeting him tomorrow at 9. Where? A coffee shop, just around the corner. He's doing all the driving, too. That's nice of him, but I still think we should have a car of our own. You think? Well, if he does the driving, and let's say we decide early on we don't want to do this, at least we're free to tool around, even if we spend a few extra days. Huh. You're thinking about that side trip already. I just don't want to be dependent on Miguel the next few days. Okay. There's still time. I'll call the front desk. Uh, these rental places normally have pick up. Interior coffee shop, morning. John and Kathy are seated at a booth. In walks the Hispanic male, Miguel Delgado, late 30s, clean cut, dressed in a suit and carrying a satchel. John waves him over. Later, at the booth, paperwork is covering the table, brochures, applications, etc. So what do you think? Well, it seems like an interesting enough opportunity. Oh, it is, trust me. It's like the state of Florida is on sale. Apparently. And it's looking for cash investors like you. And you pay 15%? No, me, my company. It's 12% on the flips and 15 on buy and holds. Seems too good to be true. Uh, I know it does. <coughs> now, John, you're a financial planner, right? Yeah. Well, then, you've seen firsthand how the markets go up and down, right? Sure. And when the economy tanks years ago, didn't you have that little group of folks that invested a ton of money? Oh, yeah. And right now, they are sitting pretty. In the crash of 1929, that created more millionaires than any time in history. But all the news talked about was people jumping out windows or selling apples on the street corner. <laughs> America was on sale! I see the same thing right here. John raises his eyebrows and nods. And you, Kathy, as a property manager, you see how your clients make money. That's why we started reading about this. We wanted to retire young. And you're not going to do that with that a traditional savings IRA or 401k that just rides the market and social security. Forget it. But you still have the baby boomers who are retiring and more and more are coming in from Canada. You've come to the right area to do this. It's a whole new market. 